Hey guys, it's Ryder here, and I literally just finished um, episode 7 of Arrow, um, Draw Your Bow Back. So I'm going to do a episode review right now, and um, we're going to do this once again in the top 5 format. So, um, uh, But overall, this episode was pretty good. Um, actually, really good. I enjoy Arrow way, way too much. Um, but... There are some really cool things that happened in this episode, which obviously I'll talk about. Um, but uh, first, I want to say that I thought the promo for uh, Flash vs. Arrow was really cool. And it seems like, I'm just going to do like a really like quick like 10 minute, or 10 minute, 10 second thing on this. Um, but on the promo, and what the show, with that episode, those two episodes are going to be about, um, but it seems like Barry Allen is under mind control, or something like that, or if he's not under mind control, he was put up to doing something, or injected in something, or has something inside of him, that has turned him against, or turned him evil, and that could definitely be something from Harrison Wells, if Harrison Wells is, um, Professor Zoom, he could have given Barry something evil by accident, or not by accident, not on purpose, but who knows right now, it just, there, you know, it was cool, them, it was them fighting, and Green Arrow shooting, and Barry's like, you'll never be me, you'll never be as fast as me, and I don't know, it doesn't seem like, obviously, um, Oliver Queen hasn't done anything to Barry Allen, and Barry Allen, I, I really don't know what this, the whole thing is going to be about, um, but, you know, we'll have to see what happens. Um, but starting off, number one on the list is going to be Cupid. Now, Cupid, um, you know, her name's Carrie Cutter, and as the episode goes on, you realize that she isn't just another supervillain. She has mental, like, brain problems, sort of, like... Psych psychotic problems, and um, she's like obsessed with uh, attachment disorder, something like that. And I, I really don't know the exact details like that, um, but she's another archer, and never really explains how she became such a great archer. Um, but uh, wait, wait, really quick before I continue, there was something that the brilliant minds at Warner Brothers, DC, CW, television, whatever. The brilliant minds there know how to really work the show. And just by adding things like a, an opening cre uh, um, opening credit scene, that's just slightly changing it just a little bit to fit the episode, that makes the episode that much better. Um, and, you know, they've been changing the... When they... When you... Um, First, when you start watching an episode, it's like, you hear the whole Oliver Queen intro, it's like, my name is Oliver Queen, and I, and I must be someone else, something else. And then it goes, previously, on Arrow, and then after that, you see, like, what the first scene of the episode, and then you hear the dun, 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 and then that's the opening, like, scene. It just says Arrow with a different arrowhead in the background. They've been changing that up from every season. Season one was something different, season two was like cut in half, half black, half white for Deathstroke, representing that. And this, now this one, it's like this Hong Kong Japanese arrowhead or whatever. And it, it, it's really cool. But for this episode, because Kiri Cutter, the Cupid, um, has like heart arrows, the arrowhead in the background was the heart-shaped arrow. And when that came up, I just got the chills because I thought that was just so cool that just by that little thing, they made, in the first three minutes of the whole show, I had chills just, just seeing the opening credits scene. And that's why the show is so good. Now, um, I do recall that Agents of Shield did something like that at the end of an episode last year, which I really did like. And... That when they revealed that Hydra was everywhere and inside of S.H.I.E.L.D., they ended the episode, you know, they usually end the episode with the S.H.I.E.L.D. logo, the end of the episode with the Hydra logo, which was very cool, but this worked out, and I hope they do, like, a, a bunch of those this season, like, for the Flash vs. Arrow, they could do, like, a lightning bolt with an arrow over it, I think that'd be cool, um, 
but we'll have to see what happens. But getting back to what we were talking about, um, Carrie Cutter is basically obsessed because Green Arrow saved her back when when um, the Marakuri soldiers were attacking by you know being led by Deathstroke and everything. Um, Oliver Queen or the Arrow saved her, and she basically became obsessed with him, and she like kills people for him, and loves him, and that story. Um, it was cool seeing Cupid, because she's like a, he's a pretty, you know, decently big uh, DC character, which is always really cool to see. Always love it when they bring on uh, characters that, like comic book characters, like Ted Grant, you know, I always think that's cool. Laurel Lance was not in this episode, which I thought was a little strange, because I thought that they would, you know, throughout this whole season, they'd really use her in almost every episode, because, just because of you know, how she's going to become the new Black Canary. So, I'm really excited to see that. Um, but there's some other characters that will be suiting up later in the season, which they did hint a little bit in this episode, so I thought that was really cool. Uh, but number two on this list is, um, uh, let's see, um, Oliver and Felicity. Now, we know that Oliver and Felicity liked each other, but Oliver sort of made the choice that he has to protect the city first, and he doesn't really, he just can't be in a relationship. And there's this whole thing where Oliver is jealous of Ray Palmer, um, who isn't, once again, in this episode. Well, I just love Brandon Routh's adaptation of Ray Palmer. He's, like, such a cool guy. I mean, obviously, he could be some sort of I mean, I have no idea what's going to really happen with Ray, pa Ray Palmer. I mean, I'll talk about more of that. I'll, you know what? I'll talk about that later completely. Um, but Felicity is going on this date, or not this date, but this, like, um, professional dinner with Ray Palmer so, and to win over this business partner. So Ray will be able to use that for Palmer Technologies. Oh, yeah. Queen Consolidated has a new name. Palmer Technologies. Queen Consolidated does not exist anymore. Um, but I do have a feeling that there's going to be something big with Ray Palmer in this season. He's definitely just going to be a one-season character. That's, that's sort of what I'm, you know, that's sort of what I'm picking up. Right now, I don't know that, about that for sure, but that's just sort of what it seems. And um, I think something big is going to happen with that, and Oliver's going to get the company back. And I think it will eventually become consolidated. Now, um, that's... Assuming that Ray Palmer is involved in something huge, which would sort of make sense because he's definitely becoming the Atom, which I'll also talk about more later. But, um, you know, we'll have to really see what happens with that. But, um, I don't know. It's just, it's all very exciting. Number three on the list is going to be, um, the, actually the past, uh, the flashbacks from this episode. Which I don't usually do, but I thought this one was pretty cool. I'm starting to have some theories about what's gonna be with the whole flashbacks. So, now we gotta remember that this is Oliver's third year on, this, on the island. And this is Oliver's... Let's think about this. He came two years ago. So this is gonna be... Let's think. One. This is probably the beginning of his second year. No. Third year. Beginning of his third year, I guess. Yeah, season one was... One year. Yeah, it's the beginning of his third year. So you gotta think of it probably about seven about seven years ago it was happening. Um, on the flashback. So I'm this is this could be seven years later. So obviously Oliver's in that house with the Hong Kong family working for Argus. Now there's this whole thing where the in the flashback that um, the her the guy he's been working with. His family's worried because he's not showing up. Um, I think that he, they either die, the family, or they become villains. Or not her, him, but I mean, obviously, I, what, I mean, I don't know. I have theories, but I don't know if they're really correct because that the flashback only plays some of the role in the final parts. Um, but I think that. Oliver's gonna be on a mission with the guy he's been working with, 
the Hong Kong man, and he's gonna eventually die, and Oliver is gonna live, and his wife, which is the same actress who plays uh, Yukio in the Wolverine, um, but she's obviously a Marvel DC. So you know, I don't love the the actors and actresses who do like some DC and some Marvel movies, cause like, come on, like make a commitment. Um, like Brandon Routh, he was Superman, Superman Returns, and now he's the Adam in Arrow. So he's obviously a DC DC guy. Uh, but not, not the point. But I think that um, the Hong Kong man's wife is going to eventually become a villain current day because she is obviously a skilled swordsman or she'll be working for Ra's al Ghul. So something cool is going to happen with that. And that's obviously why it's number three on my list. You, you'll know who I'm talking about. I don't know their exact names. But if you see the episode, if you've seen the past Arrow episodes, then you'll know who I'm talking about. Um, now, number four on the list is going to be Ray Palmer. Now, some pretty interesting things happen with Ray Palmer. He seems like a very, a very big charmer for Felicity in this episode. He kind of wins her over, and there's a lot of jealousy, like I said, with Oliver Queen, with him, but that's not even the main part. Um, I think there's something bigger going on with Ray Palmer. He says he wants to make the world a better place. Now, I agree with that, and I think that'll be fine, right? Because he he is part of the Justice League eventually, and he's a superhero, not a supervillain. Um, but there's something else going on that's bigger that he's just not sharing. He wants to make the world a better place, but I think that some of the things that he's doing, like what Felicity and him went to dinner for, to get that business part, to get that man's, you know, to get a business deal with that man, I don't think that was really for making the world or Palmer technology a better place. I think it was for what is called in the show we've seen the A.T.O.M exoskeleton or the Adam exoskeleton suit. Now, this was very exciting when I saw this because. Um, we're, we're, we're getting our first concept for the Adam suit. Not just, we've seen Ray Palmer, fine. This is, this is the fourth episode he's in, been in? Fifth. Fifth episode he's been in. Alright, now that, that's exciting right there. Seeing five episodes, seven episodes in to season three, we've already gotten a wildcat suit. We've already gotten concept images of Black, the new Black Canary, aka Laurel Lance. We're already getting pictures of the Atom. Now, and then we're also getting promos for the Flash versus a Arrow. This is so cool. I'm so happy that they're doing this together. Um, I cannot wait to see the Atom exoskeleton suit on. I don't exactly know what the Atom suit is for. It could be for making the world a better place for like drones. And we could do a whole, they could do a mini Ultron thing in DC on television, you know? It's, if um, Ray Palmer makes a bunch of these suits and they all go bad, that could be a huge thing here. I don't think they're going to do that for two reasons. One, I don't think they want to really cross turf like that with Marvel and Age of Ultron. And I think Ra's al Ghul is obviously going to be the main villain. But um, just seeing this, uh, him pull it off, and he's I mean, he's such a smart man. He's planning something, and I'm not sure what yet. And he could, they could twist, twist the tables and make him a villain. Have you guys, I don't know if you guys have seen Avengers Assemble Season 2, but um, in Season 2, you know, Night, you might not know Nighthawk, but if you don't, you should look him up. He's a Defender, which if you don't know the Defenders, you should definitely look them up because they're doing it on Netflix. This is Marvel we're talking about now. And um, on Avengers Assemble, which consists of the basic Marvel team, or the basic Avengers team, you know, Iron Man, Hulk, Thor, Captain America, Black Widow, Hawkeye, and Falcon, they had contact with Nighthawk, and he wasn't a hero. He was a villain from Hyperion's planet. Which, that's probably true, but I don't remember him being a villain. He's a defender on the superhero team. So, they could just twist tables and make him a villain. Um, but they already have another supervillain, Manhunter, which should be coming on the show very shortly. So I uh, should be excited for that. Um, but now we're going to move on to number five on the list, and probably the biggest surprise for me in this episode um, 
There, I only have one complaint, but I'll talk about that in a minute. The top number, like top, the number five, which is the biggest thing for me in this episode, was the announcement and introduction of none other than Captain Boomerang. Yes, he is finally on. George is finally on the show. Um, I've been waiting for him to actually like make an appearance for a while now. And I was just surprised at the very end of the episode, like, very end of the episode. That's what ends the episode. Um, now, George Harkins, I think this is his name, he, his, in the show, he wears, like, this black, like, down coat that looks exactly like what he looks like in the comics, except he has no, he doesn't have that, uh, you know, loser-like airplane that's a, a tendon's hat that he wears in the comics and the TV shows, so he doesn't look like a loser. He looks cool. It's the only part I wish that happened was if they're going to do make Cupid a complete psychopath and addicted to love and all pink and red and black and then blah, 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 why couldn't they make Captain Boomerang's coat at least a navy blue? It's just black. That's not his colors. I feel like every superhero is just black, and that's what I liked about it. I mean, Hawkeye, they made black with purple. Falcon, they made black with the red goggles. I mean, everyone, they're just making black. Bring the colors here. I'm not saying I want the airplane hat. It looks really, really bad. But, I would have liked to see some sort of blue down coat, or blue inside of the coat, something cool. But besides that, the, him throwing the boomerangs was just insanely cool. The, all right, definitely, I don't know. I can't even describe it. It was such a way of attack. He threw it far, and then it didn't even have spikes in it. It was just a regular, like, cyber boomerang. It was so cool. And I can't wait to see him in next week's episode. Assuming that's what they go with next for next week's episode. Now, um, um, I know he is the main antagonist, at least in the uh, Arrow episode of The Flash vs. Arrow. So that would be cool. Um, I would kind of like to see some sort of rogues. Now, he, I seemed like he did make some sort of reference to the rogues a little bit. And um, at the very end, he's like, the kind of hard work will we do? Very hard. I don't even know. This is the kind of work that we have to do. Which was cool. He had his, like, sort of Scandinavian accent a little bit. But it was cool. Um... So that's pretty much it for my episode review, but I did leave out two parts, which I was really pissed off about when I was uh, I was listening to my Flash review, um, ep episode review for this week, and I realized I forgot two major parts, and this, these were two really cool things. There was a reference, to, well, because you know Girder was the villain, Harrison Wells, when Barry told Harrison Wells and, and you know, Cisco and Caitlin about this metal man, Harrison Wells goes, oh, a man of steel, and that was obviously a reference to Superman, um, obviously in this show, it wasn't, Harrison Wells, they don't know about Superman, so that's, him saying that didn't mean anything, so don't get, don't get excited that Superman's coming to Arrow, he's not, um, Superman already had his days in Smallville for like 10 years, so, and plus he's just had the Man of Steel movie, and Batman v Superman, so, sorry guys, it's not happening, but, I thought it was cool that they referenced that, um, also, Iris West, she was talking to Barry at the end, they mended their relationship, and, Iris and Barry, and she's like, Barry, there's more than just this streak, and there's more of these super humans, or something like that, and she goes, I was reading about this, these sightings of a man who lights on fire and doesn't get burned. And now, then, then I'm thinking, oh, Heat Wave, you know, because Heat Wave, he is coming with Captain Cold, and they are going to be the antagonists on uh, episode 10 of The Flash, which is going to most likely be the Rogues um, episode, probably, or at least, like, the second part of the whole Rogue storyline, I'm sure they'll do a third part at the end of season two, at season one of The Flash. Um, but then I'm thinking, a man who can light on fire, Keep Wave doesn't light on fire, he's like Pyro, he just shoots fire. 
man who lights on fire. Who's coming to the show who's on fire? <gasps> Robbie Amell is Firestorm. Holy shit. And this was just an insane moment for me because I'm like, they're already rough. They've, we've seen um, Robbie Raymond, Ronnie Raymond. Sorry, I said Robbie Raymond. That's the actor. Ronnie Raymond in, the, in a flashback from In the Flash. And now we're going to see him in full-on Firestorm suit. Which I'm sure that will be coming very soon. So we'll be excited for that. Um, but that's pretty much it for this video. I'm Ryder, signing off from Toys with Attitude. Please remember to click your like, subscribe. I'll be back with some um, toy reviews soon of Dino Charge stuff. So get excited for that. Um, yeah, but I'm Ryder, signing off from Toys with Attitude. And keep writing, guys. Bye.